This lesson is about payment types and payment terms. You can find them going again to the admin section, finance, accounting, and invoicing. That's the subsection, and that's where you find the payment types and the payment terms. Let's first go with the payment types. Those are the ways on how you can get money. And especially the thing is also, uh, would it be able to be reimbursable? By default, there's already a whole uh, bunch of them in there. So we have the cash, that's money in the pocket. A company check, that could be, uh, and you have the description as the same. A company credit card, other, that's always a good option to have. So you have an, an alternative in case that something is not, uh, not part of it. You have a personal check and a personal credit card or a MasterCard. Now, another uh, payment type could also be, for example, a bank transfer. So we can also put that one in there too. And we leave the description the same as the, as the name. Um, choose if that one is going to be a reimbursable. I think in some cases, yes. And we make this one active too. If you say, you know what, personal credit card, we will never accept that. There's a way to basically delete it if you haven't used it. You can either also way inactivate it or you can edit and change the name. Uh, another common payment type would be what they sometimes call, an, uh, in some places they call it an incasso, uh, automatic incasso. This also be, I think the more general uh, verb, which is ACH. It stands for automatic clearinghouse. And that's also a way of drafting the money from uh, somebody's account. In this case, we also call it ACH over here. Might even be reimbursable too. And we also call it active. And then you press save and then you're good to go. This way you have your payment types and you can easily uh, edit them. You can change the names and you can change the, the description if you want to. So many options available. Besides payment types, you also have payment terms. In the system, there's already a couple of them. The most common ones is indeed due upon receipt. So right away when you deliver something, you want to have the money. Um, I will quickly edit it so you can kind of see how it's the setting. But it's basically due upon receipt, the same as the description. Due in days is zero because you want to have the money right away. And it's an active one. The same way we uh, set up the other ones for the 30 and the 40 and the 60 days. I wouldn't recommend never give those options. Don't, don't do the 45 days. Don't do the 60 days. I would say give them a, a net 15 days. That would be a more uh, common one. You fill it out. And here it's going to be the 15 days. And there's active. You can even put it to 14 days, like two weeks. That's, that's a common practice too. Uh, but one that's for sure you want to have there is uh, payment up front or in advance. It's also a nice one. You can read it over here. That would also be due in zero days. Basically, it would be a negative amount. You want to have it in advance before you order it, but it's due in, in, in uh, zero days. And you also mark it active. And there you have it. That's a, that's a very common payment term. Payment in advance. Uh, first payment and then you order stock or then you execute on, on what you want to do. I would suggest the, the net 60 days. Leave it in there, but you just inactivate it. And also the net 45 days. Just inactivate it. The 30 days uh, might be what, what kind of business you are, what kind of clients you have. You might be able to offer that one. Uh, but I would start off at least always with either way to do upon receipt. Payment in advance, and for your good clients, you can do the, the net 15 days. I hope that gives you guys a good uh, overview of payment types and payment terms. If there are any questions or suggestions, please go to our Facebook group and leave your comment there. Thank you.